Hello and welcome to Rock the Casbah block 15. This block, as you can see, has one major piece of applique and is then highlighted in each corner with beautiful stitching. The stitching is decorative. The quilting on this block is, and I'll show you the back of that one, um, comes through all of our open areas and is a or is called the pyramid quilt design. As always, as well as this block in five different sizes, you also get the quilting block in five different sizes and you get the continuous quilting design as well. Okay, let's come and have a look at how to create this great design. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our um, cutaway stabiliser and we are going to lay our embroiderer's felt on top of that. Using our wash away thread in the needle only, you don't actually need it in the bobbin, we're going to then stitch down colourway one which is going to hold that embroiderer's felt down. Now next section, before we get to colourway two we're actually going to come through and trim away our excess fabric and the reason that we want to do this is because we don't want all of those excess um, pieces of fabric sitting in our seams making our seams really bulky so this avoids all of that and I'll just come through and finish trimming here the reason that we use wash away thread is because we don't want extra seams showing at the end either so wash away thread is a great way of making sure that doesn't happen. Now I'm taking my 100% cotton fabric and I have come through and I've starched that lightly and now with still using the 100% uh, sorry the wash away thread I'm going to come through and stitch colorway 2 which is going to show me exactly uh, or which is going to stitch down the fabric onto the cutaway stabilizer. The cutaway stabilizer that I am using is a poly mesh and I like it because it is soft in the project and not too thick to get in the way. Now let's thread our needle with um, the dark pink embroidery thread and I'm going to come through and stitch colorway three which is going to show me where to put down my applique fabric. Now you'll see here that mine looks more purple that is a stuff up on my behalf if you stitch this in pink it will save you from having to change your thread color. So colorway four is going to hold down our applique fabric and normally I'm telling you to stitch to trim really closely around your applique this time I want you to just trim it quite ragged and you'll see I'm not paying a hell of a lot of attention I'm still leaving maybe a couple of millimeters on each side that's because we are about to do some really deep stitching on top of the applique and there's a chance our fabric could move you do need to trim around each one though because colorway 5 is going to show us or is going to stitch in the corners as well as in this middle section. So what I'm doing now is I'm changing over to my um, deep pink thread. Now you've got to love a needle threader saves my life and my eyesight and this is probably one of the blocks with the most stitching in it. It's one of the most simple blocks that we do because it only has two pieces of applique but there is an awful lot of satin stitching on top of this which of course does take time. Don't worry too much that my machine looks to be going at supersonic speed. I am um, stitching on about five or six hundred stitches per minute but I didn't want you to have to watch the entire hour of me doing this so I thought I would slow it down and ideally make it 
um, just that little bit easier to watch. I'm loving the detail that comes through this design with the satin stitches. Because those stitches are changing direction, it almost adds a color play element to the block where you're seeing different um, colors highlighted at each stage. So while we're stitching this, the other questions that I get a lot is um, what needle am I using? I'm using an 1175 needle. Over the entire project, I think I used three or four needles. Um, if that just gives you some sort of an idea, I'm really a change the needle when it's required kind of a person. Um, and when I say that, I mean if my if I start to have difficulty threading the machine, if I get lots of shredding, if I break the needle, of course, um, or anything along those lines, it's always a good opportunity to change your needle. So we're halfway through this center panel at the moment. Um, other questions I get is, does it um, must you use pellon? You don't, or oh, sorry, parlon or embroiderer's felt. You don't have to. I have seen a couple of people using pellon. Um, however, it can be a little bit thick, so just you know, be a little bit aware of that. I've seen. Um, I've seen people do the block without using anything but just stabilizer and then the wadding on the back. It really is about what works best for you. What I like about using the embroiderer's felt or parlon, I've seen it called both things, is simply that it gives me a better finish. And when I'm doing a lot of stitching that's going to suck in, like we're doing with the satin stitches, on most of our blocks. I just want to give the block the best chance of having a perfect finish as I possibly can. Um, other questions that I get is what bobbin fill. I'm a pre-wound bobbin kind of a gal. Um, use whatever works for you. I've got a really nice strong bobbin fill. It's actually one that we sell and I'm even using that to quilt on the back as well and I find it's strong enough to handle that quilting. If you like to wind your own, please feel more than comfortable doing so. Um, when you get to the quilting on the back, if you want to use a specific type of a quilting thread you are more than able to do that as well. So here we're coming to the end of the stitching within the flower and now we're going to move over and do the little five pointed orange peel segment for lack of a better term in each of the corners. When you're looking at threads to do this project, um, really consider how much thread you have in a spool. If you have a thread that you absolutely love and works perfect, but you are you know only have a couple of hundred meters left, try and buy some more before you begin the project. I've used about um, probably a little over a thousand meter spool on this quilt. Now, while we're doing all this detailed stitching, it's a great time to get your backing fabric and your wadding ready. I'm using a polyester wadding because it is what I have in the house. One of the things that I love about this quilt is that the only thing I had to go out and purchase for it was um, four fat quarters of fabric. Everything else I actually had in my stash in, and that includes the backing fabric as well um, so I'm, I'm rather pleased with myself over how I've managed to um, 
to use up my stash to make this. Uh, because of that, because it's polyester, I'm not pressing my wadding. What I am pressing and starching is my backing fabric. And that's just because when I look at the back of the design, I do not want to come through and see puckered fabric. When you're looking for a backing fabric, I've used a an actual backing fabric which has a much harsher feel than a 100% cotton. And once again, the reason I'm using it is because I had it in my stash. If I hadn't had this particular fabric, I was actually going to go through and make the backing on each block different and that way my quilt would look different no matter uh, or from both front and back and be something interesting to look at and that is totally up to you what you then do so we're just about to finish the third segment or corner here and then we are going to come over to the fourth. So I hope you're liking this project so far. This is actually block one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is block eleven that we've been working on but it only comes out to month five so I hope you have been enjoying what we've been doing here and here we come with the last corner what I'm loving seeing as people send me their photographs is all of the different colors that people have been inspired to use It's always nice to see. I never perceive that I have um, a good grasp of putting colours together, so I love getting inspiration from other people's. If you look at anything that I do, my colours are all very, very similar. Now, at this point, we are now able to trim firmly around that centre applique object. I'm using my squeeze tip scissors here because they are just the perfect scissors to do that with. And now I'm going to change my thread to the deep wine colored thread and I'm going to stitch colorway six, which is going to do the outline stitching of the applique shape as well as more detailed work in the corners. Now, when you do an applique stitching, everybody's and every designer's stitching is different. I like to make my applique stitches, they have an underlay with them which help to keep the fabric um, in place and make sure nothing ever unravels etc and so forth. I then do a nice sexy satin stitch and I finish that off with a uh, going around the object with um, on both edges with a triple stitch just to finish it off and I've probably been doing that for the past 13 odd years and it just gives a beautiful finish to those applique designs So we've done the basic stitching here and now you can see we'll come through and do our triple stitch on the outside and then on the inside. One of the things I loved about creating this block was really finding a way to add texture and distinction to the block with stitches. So the arcs that are going around those deep pink orange peel segments that we've already done each color and there are three colors so we've got our medium teal our wine color and then the dark teal are in a different style of stitching so the style of stitching that we're using here 
is called a radial fill and it's basically just a straight stitch that very closely follows around the shape that we are trying to make. I like this stitch because it's a fairly quick one to do and it always shows um, good dimension. It always comes up looking lovely within dimension. Now that that stitching's done, I'm going to change to my medium teal thread and I'm going to stitch colorway number seven, which is going to show me exactly where to put my applique fabric. This is just a tiny little circle just to finish off that flower. I'll trim around it. And now I stitch colorway nine, which is not only going to hold down and do the satin stitch around that circle, but it's always go also going to do a beautiful little flower stitch along the inside of the wine colored stitching that we just created. So you, what you can see here is that we're really just layering up the design as we go along with color and interest and different things to appeal to the eye. I'm a horrible person when it comes to touching things. Um, I'm very much texture driven and the worst person at all when it comes to seeing things in a museum or at a shop. I want to touch, I want to see what it feels like. It's one of the reasons I love candle wicking so much. But um, I really do think that these different stitches help to give different elements to the design. So we're coming up on the last part of this color here and then we are going to change our thread to the dark teal and we're doing actually a chain link stitch. So this one does take a little more time because it is satin based and it just looks like a um, like pieces from a chain link fence. And you can see compared to the other stitches, just that there's that little bit more involved in this. Now, one question that does come up um, is what do you do if your applique stitch is not covering the applique? There are generally two reasons for this happening. The first one is that you haven't trimmed close enough to the applique stitch. The second reason is that your tension is a little bit out and you need to modify your machine's tension and probably the bobbin tension um, to the point that that is stitching a little bit better. Generally speaking, when it comes to a satin stitch like on applique, you should be using the rules of thirds. So when you look at the back of the stitching, one third in the center should be your bobbin fill and one third on either side should be your embroidery thread. I can remember when I first bought my embroidery machine home that I really thought there was something wrong with the machine because it didn't know to just stitch perfectly and only ever show bobbin fill on the back. And this was sort of only as the internet was getting started, so it was a different world out there. And we're on to the last segment here, and this is actually the last um, of the stitching stitching that we're going to do on this block. So again, get your um, wadding and your backing fabric ready. If you don't want to use wadding and backing fabric and you just want to then place the blocks together as you um, as you would a regular quilt, you can stop after this colorway and your block will be complete. Instead, I'm gonna come through and load my machine with the wash away thread 
before I put my wadding on the back and stitch out colorway 11. Once I've got that, I'm going to trim away the excess of the wadding, as you can see here, and then I'm going to get my backing fabric and lay it on top. Once that's done, I'm going to return the hoop to the machine, and while I've still got the wash away thread loaded, I'm going to come through and stitch colorway 12, which is going to secure the backing fabric. I can now switch over to my quilting thread, which for me is a white embroidery thread, and begin the quilting. And the quilting on this block is actually one of the quickest parts of the block that you will do. As I said, it is the pyramid quilting design and it's just such a pretty um, and geometric design. I thought it went really well to juxtapose the curves on this block. And there we go. So let's come and take a look at the finished block. You can see how the quilting really shows up there on the block. It's almost like there's claws coming out of that flower, but they are really, and it almost looks, it's somehow, the word that comes to mind for me is passion on this block. I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you, and that you will join us for the rest of the Rock the Casbah collection. Until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.